hello guys welcome to my youtube channel so today we are going to discuss protein transport into chloroplast so first what is chloroplast chloroplast is an organelle that helps the plant in the conversion of solar energy into biological energy okay and this helps the plant in photosynthesis so it is entirely present within plants it is a plant organelle and it contains the photosynthetic pigment chlorophyll so just to give you a brief idea about the structure of chloroplast so the first thing that is present in chloroplast first part is the outer membrane so this is the outer membrane and it is the external layer most external most layer of the chloroplast so next to the outer membrane you have this stroma so this stroma is a second layer from outside to inside and after stroma the next layer that you have this is the inner membrane all right so inner membrane is the third layer so between the outer membrane and the inner membrane you have the stroma so within the inner membrane you have some stacks or uh, arranged like a pile of coins so each pile is called as a thylakoid all right this is one pile this is another pile okay this is another pile so each pile is called as a thylakoid all, all right so it is arranged like a stack of coins arranged one above the other so each uh, stack this circular stack each part is called as a thylakoid and these all together one complete stack is called as a grana so individual unit are called is called as the thylakoid and uh, these units together pile up to form one grana like here this is the first grana all right next this is the second grana okay then you have third grana so all total in this picture you can see six granas this is the fourth this is fifth and the last one is sixth all right so individual units of the grana is called as the thylakoid now let us see the protein transport into chloroplast so how a protein is transported within the chloroplast so first uh, as usual any organelle protein will contain an n terminal signal sequence all right so this is common for any organelle protein whether it is mitochondria or chloroplast so it has a signal sequence at its n terminal end and it is recognized by a particular sort of protein which is called as the srp or the signal recognition particle in most of the cases the protein that recognizes the specific signal sequence of a particular organelle is called as the signal recognition particle so every protein translocating into the mitochondria chloroplast or endoplasmic reticulum will contain a particular signal sequence that is n terminal end this is called as the n terminal signal sequence now like mitochondria has only one n terminal signal sequence now in chloroplast apart from the n terminal signal sequence you have another sequence after the n terminal signal sequence which is called as a thylakoid sequence so in this picture you can see this red portion is the n terminal signal sequence present in this chloroplast protein and after the red portion you have a yellow portion okay which is this portion this is the thylakoid signal sequence so the first n terminal signal sequence what will do it will direct the protein and help in the translocation of protein within the chloroplast and the second n terminal signal sequence will help in the translocation of protein within the thylakoid all right so let us see what happens so first and in first a chloroplast protein will bind to some uh, protein translocators present in the outer membrane and the inner membrane so as you can see this chloroplast protein for translocation first binds to this protein translocator after in the outer present in the chloroplast outer membrane so after that on binding to this protein it is translocated and then it comes to the inner membrane where you have another uh, protein translocator present in the chloroplast inner membrane so this protein translocator also helps in the translocation of the chloroplast protein into the interior of the organelle all right now 
after uh, reaching the second protein translocator tra further translocation within the stroma all right further translocation within the stroma is an atp or gtp dependent process so further translocation into the stroma requires energy in the form of atp or gtp all right so after requirement of energy and atp hydrolysis this protein is translocated within the stroma so this protein now comes within the stroma side so after coming within the stroma this red portion as you can say this n terminal signal sequence is then cleaved by a signal peptidase all right so the n terminal signal sequence goes off and what is left is the entire uh, protein with a small yellowish signal sequence shown here which is the thylakoid signal sequence now it is because of this thylakoid signal sequence this protein with will further get translocated into the thylakoid so as you can see here this protein will get translocated within the thylakoid and after translocation into the thylakoid this yellowish signal sequence will be removed so only after translocation within the thylakoid will this yellowish signal sequence shown here will be removed all right now this translocation from the stroma to the thylakoid can take place in four different ways so number one as you can see this is the sec pathway why it is called as a sec pathway because some protein translocators which are homologs of the sec protein are involved in this pathway and this is an atp dependent pathway so in this pathway by using some homologs of sec protein and atp the, the chloroplast protein can enter from the stroma into the thylakoid so this is one way another way is like srp like pathway where as i have told you that the n terminal signal sequence is recognized by particular type of proteins which are called as srp or signal recognition particle here also this step uses some protein translocators which are homologs of the srp and by using this homologs of srp and atp the chloroplast protein can be translocated from the stroma into the thylakoid so this is the second pathway by which it can get translocated within the thylakoid the third pathway which by which it can also get translocated within the thylakoid is the tat pathway or two arginine translocator pathway here there are two residues of arginine located within the thylakoid membrane and these act as a translocator so these are vital these two arginine residues are vital in translocating the protein from the stroma to the thylakoid so this is another step and the fourth pathway by which it can get translocated is a spontaneous insertion so in this way it can get translocated from the stroma into the thylakoid by without the help of any protein so it can get translocated on its own so this is the stroma site and where it is getting translocated this is the thylakoid site all right so these are the four different mechanisms by which the protein can get translocated into the stroma in uh, from the stroma into the chloroplast now one thing you should remember that unlike mitochondrial proteins mitochondrial proteins have only one signal sequence chloroplast proteins have two signal sequence all right one is the n terminal signal sequence which directs it within the stroma and after entry into the stroma this n terminal signal sequence is removed another is the thylakoid signal sequence which helps in the translocation of the protein from the stroma into the thylakoid so it is only after translocation within the thylakoid this thylakoid signal sequence is also removed so two signal sequences are there helping in translocation within two different compartments of the organelle this is the basic sort of process by which a chloroplast protein is translocated